lovely mackerel. Right, that's bait taken care of. Good morning, and uh, welcome back to another episode of the Abbey Angler. Uh, we've come out this morning, it has been a lovely flat calm run out, it's been beautiful. Uh, we come out today, we are going to anchor a wreck and we're going to target some eels. Um, and in addition to that, it's now coming to the back end of autumn, or sorry, summer, coming into autumn. That means that the big black bream that were previously inshore, they start getting on the wrecks as well. Uh, so in addition to having all that sent down for the conger eels, we are going to drop a little uh, bream rig behind it and I'll show you the rigs later. Uh, and we're going to target some black bream and I brought some peeler crab with me as well possibly just to try and target some ballon wrasse at the same time while we're playing with the eels. Um, it's now an hour before I want to anchor, so we've got the last hour of the flood, and then it's going to turn about half eight, it's now about seven o'clock, so I've got a little bit of time left before I need to anchor anyway. No one else is out here, it's just me, so I'm not in a rush. Um, what I'm going to do in the meantime though, is we've got a uh, little bit of sand around the wreck, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to drop down some lovely fresh baits that I caught this morning, and all we are going to do is just to pass a little bit of time is while I'm chopping all the baits up and getting everything ready we are going to try and target a taupe um, just see if there's anything around while we're uh, while we're waiting all we've got is a little two pattern oster um, so it's made out of 200 pound mono it's crimped because I like crimps other than the uh, dropper loops and then all we've got there is a couple of green muppets on uh, because we're drifting at the minute I've got a little 10 ounce um, watch lead on so that's just going to drift about on the clicker hopefully we can pick up a tote while we're waiting and in the meantime while that's going on I'll get all my baits prepped get the anchor prepped and then we are good to go so let's see if we can pick something up before we put that anchor in okay so this is me prepping the mackerel now uh, you can fish mackerel whole and just flapper them off and I know a lot of people do that but when the small eels come out I don't like wasting bait especially if I haven't got a lot of them I know I've got a fair few today but this is this is what I do so all we've done is taken a mackerel and we've cut it in half like that and all we're going to do then is making sure your knife goes away from you just behind the pectoral fin run the knife along the spine and then we're going to do the same again. You can see where the spine is because it's got a quite a defined line. Um, and then we're going to put the knife in again. And again, we're just going to run the knife away from us. And that's going to make a nice little flappy bait. Obviously, all these little bits just throw over for the chum. And what it does is that leaves you a couple of segments. Obviously, the middle bit there has got the, the middle bit has the spine in. All I'm going to do is just literally make a little incision. And that then takes out the uh, spine for me, that goes over the side. And then what that leaves us with is a nice flappy head bit of mackerel. And then we're going to do exactly the same with the tail. Hold the tail, so you've got the main body of the meat facing away from you. And we're going to put the knife in as far back as you want to go. But I like to leave a little bit of uh, uncut meat just so I can um, have a hook hold. And then again running the fillet knife down the spine take it out so again that's flat and you can see the spine just there look and again i'm just going to find my mark on the uh on the bait there we go and i'm just going to again this time i'm going to turn the knife up because i'm going away from me on the other side run it along the spine again and again now you see you've got three bits so you've got this bit that bit and then the bit in the middle which you don't want and all you can do now is just cut that off there is little bits of belly meat on there, so we're going to be breaming later. So I will cut that little bit of belly meat off, so I'll save that for now. Then what that leaves us with is a lovely flapper bait. And you can just hook that once for the tail, or once for the head, and that's you. And that's how we prep a mackerel for congering. There we go, we've got more baits to do obviously, but there we have a lovely set of baits. So all the head halves there at the top, the tails at the bottom. And then we've got loads of little off cuts of strips of belly meat for the bream. So nothing goes to waste there. The rest of it goes over as chum. You could save it for shark chum as well, or taupe chum. You could take all the odds and sods home. But that is how simple it is. And we've got some cut to prep up later as well. Well, we were coming over a bank, so I decided to put a turbot rig down. Um, I've got a tote rig out as well, but it was a lovely looking bank, so I put a turbot rig down, and we've just started coming up it, and we've had a bite. I'm not saying it's a turbot, because I've never fished here for them. Well, I have, but I've never had nothing. But for while we're killing time, I'll have a go. It is slack water, so it's possible it's a dogfish. It's not big. But it's a fish, so first fish of the day at least. We're still waiting for that tide to turn to put the anchor in, so anything now is a bonus really. 
Yeah. As I thought, it's a doggy. Ah, no sessions complete without a woofer. Like I said, it is slack water. But I'll take it, it's a fish. First one of the day, there you are. Lovely hook, circle look. 6 0 circle look, it's just my turbo rig, this one. A few loomy beads, a little, little bladed spoon. I was secretly hoping that might have been something other than one of these, but never mind. Got another bite on the uh, mackerel fillet. Fish on. Bit more naughty this one. The setup's just the uh, Pen Squadron 2 with my. Um, uh, pen school real one. This one doesn't feel like a doggy. You notice I'm on my own today. I haven't been on my own for a while. Not because I don't, not because I need someone with me with the legs. It's just I'm going out. I like to take people with me and I like to share the experiences. But um, Dean's in Cornwall and Jake's getting ready for his uh, Cornwall hunt this week. <laughs> Everyone is busy this week, so I'm going to come out. It's lovely slack tide, so. We'll come out and have a bit of fun. A bit of weight to it, this one. Doesn't feel like a doggy. This here is a form back ray. Just hooked in the mouth. There we go. Second species of the day. I said it didn't feel like a doggy. And this is a lovely little form back ray. There we go. I don't know how well you will see it, but that circle hook, I absolutely love these circles. They are perfect. 6-0, and that is in the corner of the mouth absolutely perfectly. I can feel he's chafed the line up a little bit, but that ain't a bad way to start. I'll take that for playing about. Form back ray, that one. Razor sharp spines on the back. You can actually stroke them downwards. If you go up the other way, you'll get a finger full of fawns. There it is. Beautiful markings on it. We're going to put this one back. Very small. A little bit of a belly flop. But down it goes. Now that wind is playing havoc with this drift. The tide still hasn't turned yet, so... Been messing about probably for an hour and a half now. But um, we've got a, a perfect south to north drift at a minute. Um, so I'm going to try and see if I can run this two at Pat and Oster over the wreck. And it's just coming in. No, it's not that. It should get a nice drift over it. I'm going to try and bounce these two 10 ohm meter hooks with mackerel heads just over the top. And that will pick me up anything that's lurking. So bass, cod, pollock, all that sort of stuff. Um, and if there's any ling there, yeah, it will get me some ling as well. But they are very few and far between here. In, uh, in Sussex, so the wreck's coming in now. I'm just holding it above the wreck. Hopefully, it's quite, quite stands up quite proud. This one, and when we get right above it, we should be coming into now. Basically, it's coming into the sound as I hear. We're over it now. I'm trying to, I'm trying to feel it so I can bounce off of it. Now donking into the wreck, so we're in the money, so we're in the snags. We'll keep contact with it at all times when he's fishing like this. Right. Get bites. Oh, 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 getting bites, working. Not connecting up. Well, let's have a go for bream now. Uh, I don't know if I'm going to get bream off out, we'll soon find out. In there. I was getting loads of little rattly bites, but I wasn't sure if they were pout or uh, bream, so let's find out. I'll try and lift it up over it. Do is I'll drop back into it. See, so the idea is I lift it up the front of it, and then I'll drop it back on top of the deck as well, like almost. That's the idea. There it is. There's a bite straight away. Right, we dropped it down and we got something. 
Oh, nicely. It's not in. Probably going to be a treble shot of power, this one, you watch. If they're down there in shoals, they're down there. It doesn't feel like a bream. <laughs> Just as I said, we've got two pout. The wreck's still below us. A nice size pout now. I would normally keep them for bait, but I don't need them today, so I'm going to put them back. Well, we are now an hour after the tide has turned, and uh, that wind's not getting any uh, less. In fact, it's going to probably get a little bit stronger, actually. So the drift is actually, or the anchor line, is actually south to north and the wreck is sitting that same way. So it is a big wreck. What I'm going to attempt to do, and I will, I will try and do it once, see if I can do it. Bit of a miracle if I can, because I'm working with a small window to get it right. I'm going to jog south and then I'm going to throw the anchor in and I'm going to try and sit south to north and have my bum, my stern of the boat, facing the bow of the boat, if that makes sense. So rather than having a whole side of a ship to aim for, I'm aiming for the front. I'll try it, I'll see if I can do it. I'm not too bad at putting the anchor in. I'm normally pretty accurate. But with this wind over tide, it's going to make it a real struggle. There is a smaller wreck just in a little bit that is sitting slightly better for me to anchor like this. So if this doesn't work, I'll haul it up and I'll go and have a look at that one. But I've never fished it for eels, so I don't know. So we're going to try it and we'll see how we get on. Well, we've got it down absolutely fine. Um, we are slightly off of it. Uh, basically, we're sitting to the uh, eastern edge of it. But a tide should pick up slightly. And if that wind drops off, I'm gambling that it's going to swing us right onto the southern edge of the wreck. We're slightly off it at the minute. Um, I have got the rods down. We've got a two-up pattern. I'll start on one and a long running ledger on the other. And I've got big smelly mackerel baits, fresh mackerel. Um, and I'm going to try and see if we can tempt them out. We are a little bit off of it. Um, but they will come out to baits if they're hungry and they're on the feed. And it is smaller tide. So I'll give it half hour and see if we can get some interest. If we don't, then I may give it another go because I know there's eels on this wreck. So if I can just uh, adjust slightly or the wind and tide plays ball, we'll be okay. Uh, but yeah, I'll give it a little while, see if we can't snaffle a couple. Uh, but it's proving a bit more difficult because we're now beam on. So what I mean by that is we're side onto the wave, so we've got a little bit of motion. But we can only try. We're here and we're trying. I threw it up. I was going to hold the anchor. About to hold the anchor. And we've got our first fish. It's on, I can feel it running. Okay, here we go. We're going to strike this up. Ratchet's going off. And tighten up and down. There we are. And that's going to be our first fish. Oh, yeah, there we go. We're off the wreck, so... <laughs> Sod's law, the minute I put the anchor in, the wind's dropped off like I said it was going to. And uh, <laughs> yeah, we're swinging now away from the wreck. So I thought, oh, I'll haul up and re-anchor. So I brought this two up rig in. And then this one started clicking. And again, a little Jaws moment. You look at it and it does go quiet. You look away. <laughs> and we got a fish on. Well, if we get a fish here, I won't move. I'll just stay here. No point. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. But we are, we're not on the main part of the wreck, so. Playing then. This one won't be a monster, but it's an eel. That sun's really come out. I'm red hot now. It comes at the back of the boat. Uh, it's a small one, but it's an eel. Small ones always come out first. So we'll move the weight and get the dangerous bit out of the way. And we can get that one in. There we go. First eel of the day. Perfectly hooked in the bottom jaw. There's the bait lurk, a little mackerel flapper. Don't even need a T-bar for this one, I mean. It says, a pair of pliers here, we use those instead. Only a baby, so. I keep it out of the rest of the gear. I said, I was about to move, I was about to haul up the anchor and I brought the other rod in. Yeah, a bad landing for him, but he's hardy, he'll do it. Right, I'll just get this tidied up and I'll come and show you. There we go. So, only a couple of pound, baby one. 
Uh, but as a start, the small ones normally come out first. I like to use mackerel to get a good scent trail down. And then you tease the big ones out. But that wind now has dropped off. Tide's picked up, so we're not on the wreck. So I'm going to make a cup of tea, get stretched out, sorted out, and then I'm going to re-anchor. So number one, no target cheat. He's a lazy line, so basically what it is, it's a line that runs up the side of the boat with a split ring on it. And all we do is put a little steel triangle down your line to stop the buff running up. And when I haul the lazy line, the steel ring comes back to the stern of the boat on the ordinary ring. And I just haul it up. And then rather than hauling up, I load a line with an anchor attached to it. Theory is all I'm hauling up now is that line, the buff. Obviously with the anchor attached to it at the bottom, but there's the triangle, a little steel triangle. What you do is just loop that through your line, and that stops your, your buff for your ordinary ring traveling right up to your boat. And then all you do is just pull in the slack line. I mean, it's such an easy way. I see people on the, on the Quicksilver group especially asking about their winches on the Quicksilvers and what, they, you know, when you're in 200 foot of water, you need about six, 700 foot of rope at times. You know, in the really big tides and the deep, deeper, deeper water, those winches on the front of these quicksilvers, they don't hold much. This ordinary ring is absolutely foolproof. The only way it goes wrong is if you cock it up, and you shouldn't cock it up. Look, this is, look, this is barely me pulling it now, look. To overcompensate for the line there, because of the way the boat was swinging, I had to let a bit more line off than I wanted to. There we go, now we're at the chain. on a bit of rope, you don't have to. It's gone all the way down, so that's how you hold it. And that, the buoyancy in that, is what lifts it up. Right. I'll get this re-sorted out, work out the drift line, we'll go again. Gotta mind your feet, excuse the pun, when you're letting the anchor line and rope go. There's one hook up in that and you will be in a spot of bother. It's a gas stern slightly. A lot harder on your own. Okay, so what I'm gonna do now is we're gonna take our triangle. Like I said, this is just to stop the buff from traveling up the line. Put a loop through it, got this off eBay. Yeah, that's not going nowhere, you throw that and give yourself another 15, 20 foot and what you're going to do is you're going to make a double overhand or an overhand loop like that in the rope there's a carabiner on this split ring that you just clip that loop into he says and then you just send it up the line obviously as the boat pulls tight that's uh that will uh, swing around and go up. I'll do is give me a kick round for us. Right, let's show you this now as it goes up. So yeah, there's me. Uh, there's me bringing boy here. This is obviously uh, it's got it's just got a bit of tension on it where the uh, where we're um, starting to fall back on it, but that will eventually run up the line. Excuse that, but there you go. Now you can see it's gone right up on that ring. The old lead boy is just out to our front, and we are sat back with a wreck just behind us. Obviously, we've got to move a little bit, yeah. There is a little bit of a southerly still, but I don't think we've done too bad single handedly. 
no legs and a little bit of a chop and a breeze, I think we might be bang on. So let's have a look, let it sell. Well, we have, as far as I can tell, anchored that perfectly. So we've uh, reacted to situations, had to shoot north to south. We did that, wind dropped, off the wreck, pulled it, fine. Shot it back first time and we're in, bang on. The wreck is just behind us. It's not quite showing on the sound, although as we were swinging tight on the anchor, a bit came in and now it's gone again. So I think we're perfect. So get a scent down, get a trail going. I've got the kettle on. Hopefully now we're game on. Oh, I saw a bite then already. Oh, well, we'll come back. Let's get some scent going. Get some eels. Well then, Taylor, we got fish on. Tight up drag, we're done! Oh, there we go! Oh, gotta get him out of that wreck! Oh, I'm gonna try and get where I can sit down here! Oh, there we go! Fish home! There you go, I got him out of the wreck! You gotta bully him out of that wreck, as soon as that wreck! As soon as they're in, you gotta get them out. We had a clicker go in, I was like, oh, there he is. Oh, here we go. I've got to bring one out as well. I'm not sure how wise that's gonna be. Normally it takes a little while to get the eels on the feed, but uh, we've had two bang on now, and my bring rod's going. Oh no. Oh, he's running again at the boat. Uh, the other one's got one out. Uh, come on. Obviously, I look a little bit dramatic here. With my leg situation, it twists all my hips up in all sorts of positions. So, if you see me looking all weird and wonderful, don't worry about it. I'll tell you what, ain't a bad eel. Oh, I'll tell you what, for the first one here, for a second, shall I say, this ain't a bad eel. Taking the bottom hook of the wrecking rig, or the power master, shall I say. Okay, I'll try and get him in the boat. Oh, the other one's going now. Ah, he's in. Oh, that's a lot of eel. Oh. Okay, wait up for that one. We've got another one over here. That's a nice eel. And we're going again, we got one on here, we did have. Let's have a look. Oh, he's dropped that, he's dropped that one. Ah, that was running that one. Oh, we got a nice eel down here. Okay. Well, the weight went somewhere because it's on the bottom one. I'm gonna do it. I'm going to unclip the trace. Now just unclip the trace and then the rod can go out of the way then. I've said this quite a few times, but you get most of the gear out of the way and then you ain't got to worry. Okay, so. I think you might have, hey, actually, he's come out. It's actually, I looked itself on the boat, so that's good. We're in again! The other wheel's on the deck still. We got another one. And we're gonna be in a pickle now because my bream rod's out. Already I can see I've got to scale down this. I'm gonna try and do too much otherwise. It's a good, good 15, 20 pound that first one. Well now I've got to try and guide it around the bream gear. <laughs> I think it's got a bite unless this is wrapped up in it. This one's on the running ledger. Oh, I'm already pouring my sweat. It's deceptively warm out here today. Yeah, let's guide it around that gear. Oh, actually, it's not a bit small, this one. A bit smaller. Get that weight off. That other weight went clinging somewhere. There we go. There we go. Another oh, baby. Got a bigger tool that one. Got 
big at all, but we're going to get the trace off. Before he makes a meal of it, oh, and then get the rod out of the way. And he can do what he wants, he's not going to snap any rods or gear then. Right, both rods out of the water, two fish on the deck. Happy days. All right, let's get sorted, I'll come back. There we go, there's one of them. That's a good 15, good 15 that one. One of the bigger ones, the other one down there is smaller. But yeah, two of cups and a bring ring out. That's not happening anymore. Oh, there we go, back. I'll just show you the other one. And then there's the other one, a bit smaller. Job done. Woohoo! Well, amongst all our confusion, I had a bream rod out. Or trying for a bream. And I thought I'd better bring it in, reset everything, go again. And I got something on it. Probably going to be a pout. But it is rattling. Well, I don't know, it is firing a bit like a bream, this one. But you know what? I reckon we might be unlucky. If it is, I'll be a very happy man. Really rattling, it could be a mackerel. Ah. Two mackerel on the bream rods. <laughs> that obviously sat up in the water a little bit while I was messing about. But that's two fresh paints, I'll take that. Mackerel eating mackerel, eh? What is the world coming to? I'll pay a bit more attention to this one later and make sure I get it down on the bottom. There we are, that's what the rig was. It's a two at Pata Nosta or a wrecking rig if you're from the West Country. And all that is is double crimped. Now, when I say double crimped, that's down one way up the other way, but I've got two of them. Um, and I've seen someone say, I oh, don't use crimps, it cuts the line and it will slip out. I'm telling you now, double crimps like that, you will never ever, no matter how big the eel is, you will never pull a, pull a crimp like that. That will never ever, you can pull a boat with that, that will never ever slip. I'll tag a link in for my description. Sorry, I'll tag a link into the description on how to make this. Um, but it's nice and easy, no knots, it's all just crimps and uh, a bit of Muppets and 10 o'clock and raw meat hooks. It's easy. It's that same one. I just dropped it back down. And it's come straight back on it. Oh, so I'll get my little perch, get ready to strike, is there? Ah, missed it again. Could be a small one, just mouthing at it. Breeze is picking up again now, so I expect we're going to uh, shuffle on the anchor a little bit. Oh, I can already see we are. We're on the bottom though, we're not on the wreck, we're on the sand, I can feel it. Got an inquiry on the small bait rod. Probably going to be a pout, but I saw it go over. I wonder what this will be. Moved slightly on the, the wind's gone again now, so it's moving us around. It was gone a little bit quiet. Oh wow, it's a bream, it's a bream. There we go. Boom! Target! Second target! Black bream! Happy days, and look at that! That is a cracker of a black bream. Wow, that is lovely. That's just what we were after. Just off the wreck. Come here, so at the start we're going to target black bream. They start getting on these wrecks in the autumn. And that is a, that is a really fat male fish. Look at that. And bigger, but look, that there is a really, really fat male. Oh, spiky black bream. Oh, a little bit of chaos there to change the battery, but we're on. Oh, okay, here we go. We had two fish on there, but I had to change the battery. <laughs> We're two fish gone now, I expect. That one's definitely gone. That one's remarkably still on. I've just been sat there. <laughs> Try and do that 
age-old fisherman's thing is trying to do too many things at once. Now I know there's bream there, I'm a little bit excited. And I'll try to have two conger rods, a bream rod. <laughs> it was getting a bit chaotic. So what I'm gonna do is go out to one conger rod and then fish a bream rod simultaneously. And that'll work a lot easier for me there. I'll easily bag up on the eels today. But now we've done one, or two, or four, this will be four now. We're gonna go after some of them big black bream. Have a snake snake. Again, not a big one. There we go, another one. It's a little knock on that bream right then. If this is more bream, I might consider bringing the eel rods in and going all out. Because the bream in the autumn and the late summer get absolutely huge. A three pound bream is a specimen bream. A four pound bream is a very, very good bream. And the biggest I heard of last year was five pound. And that is a fish of a lifetime. So I've got it all to myself out here, so I might. If this is a bream, it might be another pound, I'm not sure. Oh, I've got a fear it's pout. Yeah, double shot of pout that one, but there are bream there, so we keep trying with that. <laughs> Get out of there, come on. Smoke up, now it's got to the boat. in there for a second. Felt in there for a second. And right go at these baits. Well the wind's picked up again now. It doesn't look like much and it's not it's not crazy strong it's just the direction of it. It's a dead southerly wind and it's enough to create horrible chop on the water and it has just swung us right off the wreck now. Um, I've tried trimming the engine across to get back on but no dice, the eels have stopped playing ball now as well so that tells me we're a little bit too far off the wreck now so rather than haul it and then re uh, reshoot it again I'm just going to go and try a little reef and I might try and have a play around for some black bream with the rig I've got on uh, see if we can pick some of these bigger bream up um, there's a few little wrecks on the way and a few little reefs so that's the plan of action so I'm going to get tidied up, haul up and then we're going to go and try and do something else because this ain't working now but just as I said that, I think a lot of might have lost it. Yeah, just as I said that, I had a really rattly bite on the bream gear, so they might still be about really rattly. I'll leave that down for a bit longer. I've been trotting it back, trying to find the side of the wreck. Yeah, there, back again. Yeah, there you go, it's back again. Something's there. Might not be hooked, but something's there. If that was a bream, that would have stripped my bait now, so now I'm fishing with no bait. And what I'll do is I'll get, this, get the conger gear in, and I'll rebait that. I'll rebait that up, and I'll see if I can cast it, just that rod alone. And I'll see if I can't find the wreck and try and find a few more bream, because they're going to be there. I really should stop talking. Ah, oh, was that? That was running. Oh, whatever that was was running. 
Oh, that camera, that camera, you guys cost me so many fish. That was running like mad and I went to turn the camera on. And I missed it. I'm not even on the wreck, so God knows what that was. Oh yeah, yeah. Just when you think you got a plan in your head, it all changes again. Something picked that up and that's rattling. I'm, I'm on the fish, so I'm staying here for a bit longer. Fish on. I decided to try and target those black bream solely now, but I have to got a conger rod out, but it's mainly for scent. I'm hoping this isn't pout. I've cut some thin, tiny little strips of mackerel out. And I thought, well, let's have a go. It does feel like a bream. I was having to cast right out the back of the boat because we're not on the wreck. Having to cast right out, so there's a bit of line out. Oh, it is, it is a bream. Happy days. That'll look bream, but it's a bream. There we go. Another one. We're getting some really rattly bites, but we are. Camera probably doesn't do it justice. We are really moving about now, it's actually becoming a bit of a struggle for me. Um, there we go. Again, that was the rig, just two up and one down. Cut the floating beads on this one. Like I said, I'm having to flick it out. I've kept the conga bait out mainly for scent, really. I'm having to give it a little flick out behind the boat because the wreck's now quite far off. So. It's no good being off of it really with a bream, you want to be down in it, so I'll stick it out here all the time I can. If I keep catching bream, I'll just stay here until I have to haul up and then I'll head in. Another bream bite. Yeah, let's come back. Right, that time. <laughs> nah, they're so fast. They're like bang! Catch them or your bait's gone. Back though, can't hook it. I'll get a bit more up it. I'll strike into the side there. I'll try and come a bit more above it. There you go, that's got it. There you go, that's got it. It was like a nice one. Definitely another bream. It was slightly better this one. Slightly better, not massive, but slightly better. Come on the bottom hook, this one though. Right, there we go. Got a black bream. This one here, it's got a couple of um, I've got a couple of floating beads on that bottom trace to pop it off the bottom a little bit. And he's come on that bottom one there. Another lovely black bream. Another option now in this autumn, back end of summer, autumn time, another option on the Rex, black bream. There we go. Another fine black bream, really meaty actually, not massive, but it's a really meaty, I mean, see, I've got my hand in it. Really meaty fish that, that'll be, that'll be a really nice fish at some point. I've really enjoyed my bream fishing this year, it's been really good. So yeah, I can't, can't complain at this, get the fish these again. Twice a year on the black bream, lovely. Back he goes. There we go, it's another bring. There we go, that's another one. Such good fun on this light gear. Ooh, that's a better one, best one of the day. Beautiful bream. Look at that. That is a beauty. Wow. And look at that little size four. Cox and Raw Crabbers. Couple of little floating beads. Look what we bagged ourselves in. That's a beautiful bream. Absolutely. Oh, 
<laughs> they are spiky. <laughs> oh dear. That is an absolutely though. Beautiful, beautiful black yeah, breeze. Saying they're perfectly hooked at the bottom. These floating beads, they are liking that. The, the floating beads just pop it off the bottom, they make it waft. Look at that. Beautiful. Well, it just gone quiet on the bream rig. I gave it a little lift up, little movement, little flutter. And um, straight away, within 30 seconds, it had a bite. And yet again, I'm turning camera on and talking to you, so I probably missed it. Oh, there it is. Missed it. It's there, though. Yeah, it had been sat there for a couple of minutes and no, no bite. So all I did was just lift it up slightly, drop it back, a little flutter. Straight away, it's come on. There you go. Oh, that's a nice one. It's another one. This feels like a nice one. Another nice one. Another plump black green. This one taken on the top hook this time. That is a love, another lovely black green. It's just unhooked itself, so that's handy. I'm going to get that back down and I'll show you straight away. This rig is absolutely deadly for black bream. Absolutely deadly. Two up, one down, easy. That's just little tiny bits of mackerel that is. And then all I'm doing is just flicking it. 20, 30 foot behind the boat, because the wreck's well behind me now. And obviously they're swimming around the wreck. The bream conga bait is nowhere near the wreck but I've kept it out to get the scent to draw the bream out to this bait and it's working a treat. What I will start doing when I'm eel fishing now probably for the next month and a half is way above my conga rig is I'll start tying like a little, uh, a little blood knot or a dropper loop and having a bream rig 12 foot off from the bottom. Well that's the end of our session here. Um, I was trying to hang it on to get a few more bream, but the wind's picked up a bit more now. Instead of being eight to nine, it's more like 10 to 12. And from a southerly here at Brighton, the sea just gets, the sea just gets really snotty. And uh, I think, had it been a flat calm day, I know it's cliche, because everyone wants a flat calm day, but had it been a calm day and I'd spent more time trying to concentrate on these black bream and the fishing than trying to stand up, we would have had a lot more fish. As it is, we've had a really good day. We set out to catch conger eels and black bream on the wrecks. Done both of that straight off the bat. And we've got a couple of lovely, lovely black bream. I mean, check that out out there. It's absolutely beautiful. We've got a couple of those. Yeah, we ended up with probably about a dozen nice black bream in the end. We've kept three for tea. Um, and yeah, we're gonna haul up now. Tie's starting to turn again now. So we're not just a little bit off the wreck. We are well off the wreck now and the green bites have slowed right down. So I'm gonna haul the anchor up. I might stop in on the way in and have a go on some reefs or maybe another wreck to try and pick a few more bream out. And um, But if I do, I'll put it in. If I don't, I won't. Thanks for watching. Please do like and subscribe. Only you can really help me grow my channel by liking and commenting and sharing the videos. Thanks to all those of you that are watching and following on a regular basis. I really appreciate it. If you're new here, smash the like and subscribe and I'll put some more content out. Cheers, guys.